nervous, I, I was nervous, you're right. I had been and I still am. God came down and he spoke to me. And I know things you will never know. I've heard things that would make your heart stop cold. How can you call me mad? Smoke your cigarette and I'll tell you what happened. Watch me, and I'll calmly tell you what happened, and then you call me mad. I don't know how I thought of it, I couldn't tell you if I tried, but once I had, I was convinced. It was all I could think about, I, and I sat every night in the cold and the rain. I didn't do anything but think. He never called me a bum. He would always give me his loose change. Stay safe. It was not the man I hated. He had the eye of the devil, a pale white eye, and every time it looked at me, my blood ran cold and the devil looked right at me. There was no other way to stop the eye. I had to kill the man. See, you must still think I'm mad. But madmen are stupid. Huh? A madman will get caught. You should have seen me. That went my walls. How much caution I took. How long I planned for it. I was really nice to that man for a whole week before I killed him. He had no idea I was following him home. I kept so quiet, so silent, and every night at midnight I would pick his lock and open the door so carefully, cunningly. He should have seen me. I would walk to his room and slowly open the door. I wish he'd been there. <sighs> oh, you would have laughed at how clever I was. It took me an hour to get my head into the room, far enough to see him, just so far that he wouldn't see me. When my head went in the room, my hand over the torch carefully, just so carefully. I shone my ray of light on his eye every night at midnight. But the eye was always closed. God's work couldn't be done. His eye wasn't human. It was the eye of the devil. He had no idea I was there. <laughs> He's there. For an entire hour, I didn't move a muscle. But he must have been sitting up in his bed, growing in fear. Watching and waiting, just like I was. Then after a whole hour I heard a slight groan. I knew this groan. It was the groan of pure terror. It wasn't the groan of pain or grief, no, 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 no. It was a groan made from the bottom of the soul when you're overloaded with terror. I'd heard this sound before and I remembered it well. I knew how the man must have felt. And I felt his pain. Although it made me laugh to hear his groan. And I knew that he had been sitting up in bed since the torch had turned on an hour ago. When he'd rolled in his bed, he must have been growing with fear. <laughs> He'd been trying to comfort himself with stupid thoughts, but he knew I was there. There was no help for him because death had stalked him and swallowed the man with its black shadow. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> <laughs>
he was dead. And if you still think I'm mad, I'll, I'll prove you wrong when I tell you how I got rid of the body. <laughs> See what I did. There's nothing to claim. There's no splatter of blood, not one stain. Nothing. It's too clever for that. Evening, sir. Sorry to trouble you, but we've had reports of a large shout on the uh, night of the 22nd, and uh, also the owner of this residence, um, Alan, uh, hasn't been reachable. I'm sorry, I'm Alan, the owner. I've been having night terrors recently, and um, that probably explains the noise. Been out in the country for the past few days on business. You know what reception's like out there. But the fact remains, sir, there are no photos of you in this apartment, so how can you prove to me that this is your residence? I needed to get out of there. 